Thank you guys so much for tuning in with us here at Rebuild Rescue. The last couple episodes that we had were all episodes that we had recorded, pre-recorded back in January. All the adventures of going out to California and Minnesota and Arizona. That was before Sam's accident. Um, we've been through so much here the last couple of weeks and it really means a lot to us, all the support we've had. Um, everybody's still tuning in and, and just showing us the love um, that we really needed. We appreciate you guys all. This is the last video out of those videos. We do have some new videos coming out. You know, we're, we're moving forward the best we can. I just want to let you guys know how much we truly appreciate you, how much you being part of the Rebuild Rescue family means to us. Thank you for being here. I hope you enjoy the video. Take care. There's no way. Are you kidding? There's just no way. I already bought this one. I own this one. I bought it sight unseen. We got this thing loaded up. Let's get it back to the rescue hangar. As you can see, we're missing a rudder now. Back here at the hangar. I might be able to get that trailer in here sideways. All right, so we got the 235 in here. This is the new, the new 235 project, the one we picked up up in Minnesota where Joe and Zach and I were freezing our butts off. Joe had like his whiskers, he had icicles on his whiskers. Yeah, it was crazy. So the guys up there at Wentworth, Steve Wentworth, was amazing he was awesome shared so many really cool stories with us steve is an awesome guy i actually can't wait to get back up there or to have steve down here so we can chat and just kind of you know have some hanger talk time um great time so we're gonna get this thing off of here pretty cool airplane it has some pretty cool avionics in it we're gonna take a look at those and i mean if you guys look at this thing man nice paint job it is going to be a really cool airplane but we do have some problems and it's got a nice hole in the wing here from what looks like moving it damage which happens when you have to pull wings off of something so this was really similar to r235 pretty much has the same damage bent prop it has uh engine mount needs replaced you know we'll probably overhaul the engine but we're not sure joe and i are going to pop this thing off the trailer right now we're going to go ahead and get it on some carts and then we're going to pop the prop off we're going to put an indicator on there and we're going to see what kind of deal that we got don't know if this crank i, I mean what do you guys think do you think this crank is this thing is it going to be bent what's your guess a little bit, a little bit? what'd you say what was your what was your guess it was one thousand one and Joe's being nice um, to me. I'm being optimistic. He's being, he's being very op optimistic. What I say, I said, said uh, 10,000. 10, and then what did Trevor, Trevor say? Said 8, yeah, so when Trevor said 8,000, so we got a little bet going on. What do you guys think? Take a minute and post in the comments. Well, and uh, here, let me show you guys. Um, it's got a little bend going on. So the 235, the other 235, we're gonna have to like call that 93 whiskey so we can tell the difference. But 93 whiskey was about a half inch bent. But this has a con speed prop. There's a little different setup in here than the fixed pitch. I think this might be a little easier on the crankshafts. I hope so. So, I see. yeah. And then the question is: so if so, if this is in fact not bent over five thousandths, we do run out. That means that it's like you know we could do a prop AD check and we could start it. That means with your ten thousandths, you're buying lunch. Yes, oh, that does, <laughs> yes. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's get this thing under our crane. We're gonna pull these wings off. We're gonna pull this off. We're gonna go over it. Take a look at the panel. Take a look at the avionics. This is gonna be a cool airplane. Can't wait to get it finished up. Can't wait to get it in the market and see one of you guys flying this thing because it's gonna be a really cool package. So I've been thinking about getting more fit. So I need more proteins on my diet and I've been craving some really good chicken dishes. If you know me, you know I love food and I love going out to restaurants to try out new things. But that gets really expensive and sometimes I just don't have the time to sit down for an hour and a half or a longer meal. And that's why I'm really happy to tell you guys about our sponsor for today's episode, Cook Unity. Cook Unity is the first chef to you service delivering locally sourced meals from award-winning chefs right to your door 
every single week. And it's cheaper than other delivery options. And if you use code RESCUE before checkout, you get 50% off your first week of meals. And that's a really good deal. For today, I ordered the creamy lemon garlic chicken. And I have to tell you, it's really good. Literally has a sauce you put on it, you cook it on, and I can't believe I was able to just throw this in the microwave. It's like blacked and black and chicken. There's some good spices on it. You want some? One of the things I really love about Cook Unity is that every meal is chef crafted and comes prepared. All you gotta do is heat it up. That means I get a chef quality dining experience right at home or right here in the hangar. Cook Unity works with some of the best chefs, some of the best in the country, to bring creative and delicious meals to you every single week. Every meal is handcrafted by chefs and made in local micro kitchens, not these large production facilities. So another thing I really like about Cook Unity is the food arrives fresh. It's never frozen, and the packaging, it keeps meals fresh in your fridge for up to seven days. This packaging, it's all recyclable, compostable, and it's just responsible. You can reuse it. What it means is I don't have to do the dishes. And, and trust me, there's one thing that I don't like to do is dishes, so it's just this big bonus. Along with being chef created, there's a huge variety in the meals that you can get. They literally have hundreds of dishes to choose from and the menu is updated constantly. There are options for seven different dietary preferences. Vegan, paleo, pescatarian, gluten-free, and so much more. They even have options for soy, nut, and even if you need dairy-free. If you're looking for an easy way to get chef created meals right to your home, there's no better option than Cook Unity. You can experience these chef quality meals every week delivered right to your door. All you gotta do is go to cookunity.com slash rescue or enter the code rescue before checkout for 50% off your first week. Again, that's 50% off your first week by using code rescue or go to cookunity.com slash rescue. All right, so the wings are down, uh, no catastrophes, which is good. And now we just gotta get this fuselage down. So we gotta get our spreader bar. You guys saw us do it with the 401, so it should be no problem to do the 235. Now it does have an engine, but uh, we'll get it balanced out. You ready? I'm gonna get back here in the back and I'm gonna hold this tail. strut and the engine mount are one piece. During the wreck, the front strut got folded right up underneath the airplane, so the only way we were gonna get it off was with a cutoff wheel. A couple cuts, she came right off. If you look, like, this uh, shaft doesn't even look bent. I mean, it's got a sheared off bolt in it, but... All right, so, yeah, so if you guys look right here's like the damage. Um, there's a little bit of a, there's actually an access panel underneath here or something, but it was riveted on. I think at one time before it might have had a little damage under there. But obviously the, you know, this box here, just like 9.3 uh, Whiskey, this box is damaged. I actually have another one because we ordered two by accident. But it doesn't look bad, Joe. I think we can fix this up pretty easily. I think it's like a doubler kind of deal. We'll have to look and see what like Cessna recommendation is. Right, Joe? Piper. Oh, Piper. <laughs> yeah, Piper. Yeah, I'd like to see it once this uh, cradle relieves all the stress on it. Yeah, there's a little tiny bit of a, of a little something here, but man, I, it's nice and stiff. Everything looks good. I did look at the NTSB report. It looks like someone landed downwind with a nine knot tailwind and they blew over into the grass upon landing. The nice thing is it did land in the soft grass. We looked at the crankshaft as I'm moving 
the crank and looking at this line, it's not moving. Unlike 9.3 Whiskey that was bent about a half inch, it almost looks like this prop isn't bent. So a little bit later here, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna pop this off. We're gonna dial out the crank and we're gonna see if the crank is bent. If the crank's not bent, technically, we could do a crankshaft AD inspection, which you guys have seen us do before and you know, pull the back accessory housing off and, and you know, put a gear in it and, and all that stuff and just check over the engine. And, and then literally we could see if it would run. Not sure if we're gonna do it that way or not. Not sure if the flange is gonna be bent. We'll find out a little later, but <laughs> there is a lot of damage on here. So we're definitely gonna have to replace this engine mount. We are definitely gonna have to pull the engine off. This engine actually has like a lower time on it too, which is unfortunate. I think there's only like 900 hours on this engine. So, but we'll, we'll double check the logs and everything. The heater box is messed up. The exhaust is messed up. The carburetor, air box, that's all messed up. You know, engine wise, it's got a recently overhauled prop governor. And this one, unlike 9.3 Whiskey, this one has a constant speed prop. I'm excited about that. Or actually make it climb a little better if we throw some ported cylinders on here, which you guys know I love, an electric mag. It'll give it some performance, and we have a constant speed prop. I'm betting since 9.3 Whiskey climbed out at 2,000 feet a minute, I'm betting you we can get this one to climb out at about 2,500 foot a minute, which would be phenomenal. It does have two overhauled mags on it. More recently, I would say within the last, I bet, 100 or so hours. The other thing we did notice too on the wings, we do have a little bit of damage here. There's a, a pretty deep dent here and here. Nothing as far as structurally wrong. There's no structure and bends or anything, cracks anywhere on this wing that I could see. This side looks good. There's a couple scratches I think that came more from pulling apart the wing more than anything else. Unfortunately, I did see this, which definitely came uh, at some point in a transport or pulling it apart, you know, when you, when, when you end up pulling these, uh, these wings off of airplanes and stuff, you're inadvertently, you're going to get some kind of damage. Nice thing about where it's at, it didn't damage the rib at all. The fuel tank is right here. So we're going to be able to pull that fuel tank off. We're going to be able to do a repair here and we're definitely going to have to replace the spinner and we're definitely going to replace the prop. All right, let's take a look in the baggage compartment. Let's see what we got in here. Right, looks like we got a good wheel pant. Got another, another good wheel pant. We got another wheel pant. Just so happens to still be connected uh, you know, to, the, to the fork. Looks like the strut pulled uh, right out of there. Yeah, so we got all the parts there, which is good. I was kind of wondering about that. Everything in here looks really clean. Everything in the tail looks nice and clean. We got, looks like we have the covers for the wings in here. We have some gaskets from something. Uh, I think that's the wing root gaskets, seals. I don't see any corrosion. Yeah, everything looks nice and clean back here. So if you get a battery in there, I gotta take the top off. We'll take that out, throw it in the charger a while. 200 pounds of baggage capacity back here. These 235s uh, can usually haul up to, I think it's like up to 1400 pounds depending on you know what accessories you have and stuff in here. And uh, this airplane actually has some pretty good accessories that I'll be showing you guys later. It's one of the things that, uh, got me excited about getting this one. If you look at the panel, you can kind of guess. But inside, um, it's pretty good. Upholstery looks pretty good. Just needs cleaned up. Some of the plastic does need some help. You know, stuff just gets worn away over time and, and kind of flexed and everything. We'll clean all that stuff up. We got to paint some things. We got a Piper Auto Control 3. This will fly a heading and and all that other stuff. I don't know if this can be uh, kind of GPSS or not, but everything looks really clean. Obviously the panel was done, I think a few years ago. The other thing I noticed too, up here in the panel, it's 9151 whiskey. And this tail number is 586 Sierra Bravo. 
So uh, since the panel was done, somebody had it painted and changed the tail number. I love the fact that these PA28s are all whiskeys. I don't know, I just like the call out better than a Sierra Bravo. I like whiskey better, but that's the tail number we got. And I don't know if that tail number is available and I have to change it there and it's easier to change it there. So, but do get to fix that. You know, we do get the good old Ram's horn because it is a little newer year, larger shafts, no bow ties. So there's no AD with the uh, controls. We got both main wheels here and here that we removed up there in Minnesota. And guys, like, I, I just, it was cold. That was so cold up there. I don't think I ever want to do that again. So everything is, uh, looks to be good to go. We've got all of our controls here. They're in good shape. We've got some tow brakes on the left side. Yeah, so excited to rescue this one. Let's go ahead and we'll see about dialing that crank out and, you know, check over the engine a little more closely. Let's see what we got. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna pull the nose cone off, we're gonna pull the prop off. I'm gonna get my indicators out and we're gonna see what the run out is on this crank. Now we have a little bit of a bet going right now that Corey behind the camera, he doesn't know about this yet, but uh, Trevor was here and, and Joe and I, and we took our guesses on what the run out would be. Joe guessed one thousandths of run out, which some new ones I've seen have more than one thousand. So, He's feeling really good about it. I think, what did I guess, 10,000? Trevor, I think, guessed eight. What would, Corey, what's your guess? What's the allowable? Is it six? Five? I'm thinking six. Jerk, jerk. I'm thinking six. <laughs> Here, wait. One off. Here, let's call, let's call Harry. Yo. Hey, uh, question for you. So the guys and I were looking over this 235 and we have a little bit of a bet going on and it's to buy lunch, right? So whoever's the farthest away from the number has to buy lunch, right? So right now it's Trevor, Joe and I guessing how many thousands the prop is going to, or the, the prop flange on the crank is going to be off when we dial out this 235. Joe guessed one thousandths, I guessed ten thousandths, Trevor guessed eight thousandths, Corey guessed six thousandths. What's your guess? I'm going nine. Nine thousandths is your guess. Locking it in. Final answer? Yep, I like nine thousandths. All right, all right, we're gonna pop this cone off and, uh, and pop the prop off. We'll see what we got. Sounds good. <laughs> all right, brother, <laughs> see ya. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna grab some tools. We'll get this thing off, uh, pull, pull, up, you know, pull the plugs out so we can rotate this over quickly. And uh, if you guys have a guess, go ahead, put your guess in. You know, how far is this going to be out? You can see the props. It almost like it slid in between something at the same time, but... I don't know. It looks pretty straight. For a pretzel? <laughs> <laughs> Prop strike. Nope. 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 They're all stripped out. Whoever put the spinner on didn't they take it off? I'm telling you, like, there was no way this thing was coming off. Every single one of it has red, uh, one of these has red Loctite on. I would assume that the backing plate of the spinner has some issues and probably, that probably should have been addressed instead of using red Loctite. Use ample duct tape when yeah. attaching. Super glue all bolts in place and make removal virtually impossible. cutting these I'm reminding myself that I'm gonna have to safety wire these two back at some point. I'm thinking it's a three-quarter. It is. Go ahead and get this thing off.
one bent prop off. Yeah, it looks pretty good in there. I don't see a big buildup of uh, sludge in there, so I wonder how many hours are on this. I can't remember how many hours are on this engine, but I, I think it might be like a mid-time. I think it might be like an eight, 800 or 1,000 hour engine. It actually looks really good, so I'll be interested to see what the logs say. Let's go ahead and loosen this up. Go ahead and pull these plugs out. I did see in the uh, investigation for this airplane that it mentioned there was an instructor in the airplane when this happened. So I haven't looked at the logs yet to really identify whether or not this was maybe a flight school, part of a flight school possibly. I'm not sure, but it's almost looking like it might have been for a little while, maybe IFR stuff only or, or something like that because the airframe other than the accident looks like it's in really good shape. Maintenance wise, as I'm seeing, you know, the new prop governor, the new overhauled mags and the new plugs and stuff like that, it, it's kind of an indication that it's, it's gone through some, uh, some maintenance. We'll find out once we take a look at the logs because I'm kind of curious, I don't remember how many hours are on the airframe and how many hours are on the engine and the prop. Well, obviously the prop, prop's gonna need a little bit of love, uh, like total replacement, and maybe that one hanging on the wall here. I'm gonna go ahead and get the dial indicator set up. I check a couple different parameters. You're only required to check it from one area, but I just like to know what's going on with this stuff. Old handy dandy magnetic base. There's not many things that are magnetic on an airplane, but I can usually find something. All right, let's see how far out this is. What's your guess? 1,000. 1,000. Dude, that's like. You are freaking kidding me. Oh, keep going, don't stop now. There's no way. Are you can't, there's just no way. I ain't buying lunch. Dude, no way. So you guys saw this crank literally has under one thousandths of run out. I've seen cranks that, yeah, I've seen cranks with a lot worse run out. Um, and you guys know the crankshaft AD, per the rules of the FAA and per the rules of Lycoming is you have a prop strike, you got to check the run out on the crank. If the run out is good, it's got to be five thousandths or under five thousandths, I believe it is. And then you got to go ahead, you got to get back here in the cases, you got to pull that apart, and you got to check the dowel pin. What we like to do is go one step ahead and check the dowel pin, plus put a new gear, plus a new retainer, plus a new bolt. We're not exactly sure what we're going to do with this yet. I have to think about it. We may go ahead and send this out to an overhaul shop and have the crankshaft pulled out and have it magna fluxed and new bearings and just go that extra, extra, extra step. I'm not, I'm not sure yet, but I feel really good that we got a good crank. And I feel really good because the prop took the grunt of the impact and everything looks good. The firewall looks straight. So I think we're gonna be able to pop this engine off, get a new mount in just like 9.3 Whiskey, do a little bit of repair down under the heater box, get a new air box and a couple other parts. So feeling good about that, but there's one thing 
about Sierra Bravo that I was really excited about, and it's one of the reasons that I bought the airplane. Let's take a look. If you guys ever get an airplane from the guys up at Wentworth, they do such a good job of packaging everything up and making sure you have everything. Those guys are awesome. And I just got to give a shout out to Steve and the crew one more time. Literally came back from vacation, so we wouldn't have frozen completely when we were up there. Helped us for like half the day, negative 25 degrees. Steve, thank you. It was so awesome and awesome, just awesome job getting us the airplane. So we have all the logs. And I did take a look. It looks like the engine has under a thousand hours on it. And the airframe is in the 3,500 hour area. Yeah, since overhaul, uh, 1,010 hours. So we have 1,010 hours. This is a 2,000 hour TBO engine. So it's only got half the life as far as the overhaul times. I have to check the date and when it was overhauled because it could be an older overhaul. We're gonna check on it, but again, I think we're gonna send it out. I think we're gonna have everything magnafluxed and, and an IRAN, you know, in, inspect and repair as necessary. Procedure done just to make sure it's 100%. But the golden thing, the thing I was so excited about is actually in these boxes over here. It's like Christmas. It is like Christmas. Why don't you put a bow on here for me? <laughs> we start wrapping all the boxes. Yeah, we get. <laughs> this is like, a, this is um, really exciting. Let's take a look in here. And I know for some of you, you know why I'm excited because you see what's in the box here, but the other box is a little bit, you're going to see a little bit more, but we got all kinds of goodies wiring harnesses engine sensors we have all the trays for the audio panel the nav units the gps the transponder this 235 has some really cool avionics so we got a brand new g5 but look there's more I almost don't want to unwrap these because they're wrapped so well. Nice. Dang, that's sweet. GNX 375, which is going to be your GPS. Beautiful. These avionics are going to make uh, Sierra Bravo really nice 235. These were installed in it. They were uninstalled before, before I bought it, but I ended up buying all of it so we got a nice g3x you know all the engine monitoring all that stuff the audio panel so the gma 345 audio panel gnc 255a and we have a two another 255a which is another navcom so we have two separate navcoms we have our transponder and our GPS, we have our backup indicators, we have our audio panel, and we got a G3X. So this also does all the engine monitoring and all that stuff. And if you guys are looking at the panel, you're gonna see the custom panel was probably done about two or three years ago, and then the airplane was actually painted as well. So I think that we're gonna be able to get this thing flying again. I think it's gonna be similar to what I just wanted to see the panel. Yeah, I think it's going to be similar to what 9.3 Whiskey was, and it's going to have a completely iron engine. We'll get the wings back on. We will get all of the avionics back in it. Or should I put those avionics in the Saratoga? I don't know yet, but I think this was a really good buy. Again, uh, Steve out at Wentworth, thank you so much. Awesome job helping us out. We're going to go ahead and we're gonna look at getting, you know, all the parts ordered. We're gonna see how much we get into this bird and what it's gonna take for us to get it back in the air again and rescue one more airplane. All right, so as far as Sierra Brava goes, we have some really good avionics. We paid $21,500 for those avionics. We paid $17,500 for the airplane and in recovery fees, 
we probably have about, for transport and stuff like that, I'd say $4,000 in it. We're gonna need a constant speed prop. So just doing the prop strike AD is gonna cost this much. But if we go ahead and we do a full IRAN, send it out to an engine shop, we're gonna be looking at investing this much. As far as the rest of it, we have to get an engine mount. We have to do some repairs to the underside, a new heater box, a new air box. I think there's one portion that needs repaired on the wing from moving around that got damaged. The rest of it looks really good. The paint looks good. And we're gonna have an airplane with a glass, full glass panel. We're gonna have a constant speed prop, a newer interior and a newer paint job. I think this airplane in today's market with that panel, we're looking at about $150,000 value, maybe even up to 160 or 170. I'm not sure I have to take a look. So what do you guys think? Did we get a good deal? Are we gonna be upside down on this? Or is this gonna be a good flip? Let us know in the comments, guys. And as always, thank you guys for coming along. Thanks for being part of Rebuild Rescue. Take care.